Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox Rise and Shine. Everything you see here is for sale, the ultimate pre-owned watch shopping experience, and we have prices for every single watch today in the description below. To purchase or inquire about additional details, condition, and accessories, reach out to me. Email me directly at tmosso at thewatchbox.com. And of course, we're always looking to build inventory. Sell us a watch, sell us an entire collection. A million dollars doesn't matter. No upper limit on value paid, and we wire cash. If you want to do so, again, that email is tmosso at thewatchbox.com. Today, I am proud to present Urin, Armband Urin. Today's show is all about one brand, the greatest of German high horology in the modern era, Alango Unzona. This company officially was collectivized under... Soviet era watchmaking during the 1950s. So the modern Longa, established in 1990 by Walter Longa and German watch executive Gunter Blumlein, was a revival of the best traditions of yore with some technical and aesthetic nods to the past, but very much a modern high horology manufacturer. And this is exactly the kind of watch that the late Gunter Blumlein would have loved most. Shoot the moon complication. This launched in 2013 is the 1815 Retropont Perpetual Calendar. It's not as big as it looks. It's it's just under 42 millimeters, 41.9, but in platinum, it's something truly special. Now, we'll take a look at the dial. By the way, Longa moon phase discs are made of solid gold. Longa dials are made of sterling silver, so there's precious metal inside precious metal. Externally, the case is that handsome semi-pocket watch look that every Longa timepiece seems to adopt, but adapt as necessary. So this one being relatively imposed is designed to confer the idea of complexity and substance, and it does that. Perpetual calendar, split seconds chronograph. There's a power reserve indicator up at 12 o'clock. You're getting all of that in a dial, as you can see, with wonderful depth. Caliber L101, 631 parts, and get this, one, two, black polished column wheels. You can see that there is a pincer system at the center for the split seconds hand, and Longa uses a decoupler, just like Patek Philippe, so that there is no dragging of the movement when you stop the retropont hand. So a lot of times watches will slow down and drag if you activate a split seconds function. At Longa, the expensive and voluminous decoupler is a measure they take to avoid that kind of functional drawback. Now, you can also see the primary column wheel at work and a fully jeweled lateral clutch. Take note, one, two freehand engraved structures, and I'll get as close as you can so you can see exactly what I mean by that. Carved with a burin, these structures uh, for the chronograph clutch as well as for the balance are actually individual works of art by artisans who just make these all day. Now you can see silver elements here are in stainless steel. They're mirror beveled on their edge and we'll show that to good effect here to the best of my ability, but these steel parts are beveled on their edge. So are the bridges. The bridges are made of nickel, copper, zinc, or German silver, as it's known. The golden hue due to the copper content in the German silver. And then you'll note we have both black polished screws across this movement and fired blue screws. This watch includes both. What's most impressive to me is that the Elements of the chronograph, the steel components, are satinated on their top and then beveled on their side. It is not easy to work steel. You can also see that we have jewels set in golden chiton fixed by blued screws, and that's another nod to the pocket watch era, when jewels generally would not be pressed directly into bridges and plates. Instead, they would have been pressed into the golden chiton and then fixed by screw to the bridges and plates. A very special watch to wear on the wrist. Again, my wrist 16 centimeters circumference will be your reference for the rest of the show. And take note. On this King Kong complication, Longa gives you a full platinum clasp. This is not a general feature of Longa watches. Platinum clasps, clasps of any kind, tend to be optional upgrades at the dealer. Now let's talk about options. You have them because as with several watches on this show, I have both red gold and white metal variants of the 1815 Split Seconds Perpetual Calendar. They are both equally beautiful on the reverse side, and yes, both include deployant clasps. So the option is yours, red gold or platinum, you choose. Now let's talk about another timepiece that represents possibly the best blue sky imagination of the late 2000s. When it launched in 2009, the digital time display of the Alango Unzona Zeitwerk immediately earned it, as a German watch earned it, the Egidor at Switzerland's grand prize of horology, the Grand Prix de Logerie de Genève. And to win 
effectively best picture at the Oscars of watchmaking. As a German watch, you needed something spectacular. Well, that first Zeitwerk had jumping hours, minutes and tens of minutes, with a remontoir constant force device, but for 2011, Langa upped the ante with a striking mechanism designed to strike the quarters as well as the hours. Now, you can see black polished strikers here, by the way. The watch is a wonderful little trick in the quick set mechanism that's phenomenal horological theater for showing the watch off to your friends. If they're not watch nuts before they see this watch, they will be after they get a load of the Zeitwerk. And this example with striking time is even more special. Now you see, I can actually actuate the striking mechanism whenever I want. If I want to hear it or show it off, it's always available. I have stop seconds. I have a power reserve indicator for the 36 hour power reserve. I have the jumping time displays. I have these gongs that run the entire circumference of the dial, the black polished strikers. I'll shut up for a moment. Oops, my bad. I didn't actually have it on a quarter. We'll keep talking for a little bit. In fact, we'll keep talking, but we'll flip the script a bit. Right here, I came prepared. Now, this is a timepiece that is technically identical to the white gold model you just saw, but some people prefer the warmth of rose gold. Now, I can also mention to you that there are some differences in the finish here. You can see that the time bridge, the frame for the time, that's actually part of the movement. Here, they're both made in German silver, but here it's rhodium plated to give it a silver look. Here you can see the German silver is visible in its normal gold-hued bare finish, and I really like that look. It warms up the dial of the watch. The dial, of course, still in sterling silver. The movement, the L043, is a monster. Now you have an enormous mainspring, and by the way, winding a Zeitwerk is one of the great tactile pleasures in all of watch ownership. It is an absolute festival, as the mainspring is so powerful and so forceful, I should say, that one half of the mainspring is actually anchored to the base plate of the movement. Uh, you have a stop work, so the watch will actually stop when it no longer has enough energy to jump the minutes display. You could see that the stop works is black polished, and then there's a stainless steel, we'll call it a horological bridge, a remontoir actuator, maybe a second locking lever and pallet, and that's probably the best way to describe it, but there's an air brake that slows down the transmission of force, which first jumps the minutes, moves through a pinwheel-like device, and then there's this second locking lever, and once per minute, it unlocks and it energizes a hairspring. You can see there are two overlapping third wheels just below the steel structure. You can see them below, and there is a hairspring between them, and that hairspring is the remontoir de galette. As with F.P. Journe, a constant force device that acts as a buffer between the mainspring barrel and the escapement. Unlike Journe's remontoir, which unloads every second, this one coils up and unloads every minute, so you get constant force to the escapement, so no matter how tightly wound or close to stopping, you get constant balance amplitude. Now you can see there's a lot of black polished surfacing on this movement. You also have a lot of freehand engraving, and the watch uses a lovely anachronistic pocket watch like 18,000 vibration per hour beat rate with a free sprung balance and an overcoil hairspring, which is a refinement rarely seen on longer watches. So there's a lot going on here. You have your black polish, your blued screws, your violet pivot jewels, and then the golden hue of the German silver bridges and plates. This is an absolutely monstrous movement and a wonderful timepiece to add to your collection. Whether you are a straight German watch collector, a Longa purist, or just someone who's looking for a well-rounded collection of landmark watches, this is certainly that. It is bigger than the original Zeitwerk at 44.2 millimeters, but I think you're going to find that if your wrist is the size of mine or larger, it wears quite well. And once again here, uh, we do have a full deployant clasp. Uh, take note, the white gold model here comes with a pin buckle. This is what I mean. Deployant clasps are not universal on longer watches. So this is a nice feature to have to protect against accidentally dropping the watch. Now let's talk about 1815s. Langa has a nomenclature that basically centers around the dials of the watch. If you've got a jumping time display, you've got a Zeitwerk. If you have a Arabic numeral dial, then you have an 1815. Let me see. Okay, we're going to wind this guy up and fire up the 1815 Torbion, a timepiece launched in... 2014, rose gold, 39.5 millimeters. It is a handsome and relatively simple dial for a watch that is deceptively complex. Now, I know you're saying, Tim, simple with a tourbillon, you must be joking. But 
Torbjorn regulators are not all that exotic in this day and age. You can buy them, functional Torbjorn, for a few hundred bucks. This one is special because this one, unlike almost every other Torbjorn on the market, features a stop seconds mechanism. Now take a look. You can see the brake adjacent to the Torbjorn spindle. See how it jumps right up? And also note, it is a zero reset. Zero resetting the seconds hand, so you can set this tourbillon to the second. That is almost unheard of on tourbillon regulators. Now, the dial, as before, is made of sterling silver, and then it has a lovely opaline frosted finish. It is galvanized this silver white color. Note just how much black polish there is on the tourbillon carriage. And then we'll turn it over, and the embarrassment of riches continues, as Lunga loves to cap its tourbillon carriages with a brilliant cut diamond. So you can see the capstone on the bottom of this assembly is actually a brilliant cut diamond. We have freehand engraving and a very true three-quarter style bridge. This isn't designed to look like a three-quarter. It is a three-quarter. And you can see it features all those characteristic elements, including the German silver material, uh, polished elements like the pegs that are used to locate the bridge. Those are polished on their top. We have blued screws. We have glasuta stripes. And you can see they have a lovely gradient. These are laid down with an abrasive of wheel not stamped and then we have engine turning or perlage in two different sizes on the surfaces of the movement you can see the balance cock with small perlage a larger size and then actually a third and even broader overlapping perlage on the base plate in spite of its energy intensive escapement this watch includes a three-day power reserve and once again we have a full deployment clasp here so this watch includes a little bit more than your average tourbillon. And also, in terms of the clasp, great value for a longa, as the clasp is almost exactly the same weight as the watch, and it nicely counterbalances it. You want to wear it under a cuff? No problem. This is a nice, thin, handsome, and easy-to-wear watch for a small wrist. Now, if you have a smaller wrist or a taste for more traditional sizes, this is perfect for you. A 165th anniversary special, 265 pieces in honey gold for the 2010 model year. This is the 1850 moon phase homage a uh, F.A. Longa. Now, of course, F.A. Longa, the founder of Glasuta watchmaking, just about every modern East German watch company can trace its origin to the vision of this founder. And if you look at the reverse side of the watch, you can see it is truly something special. The timepiece, of course, 265 pieces in honey gold, uses a pale gold that's much like vintage uh, 7 carat, 9 carat, or 14 carat watches. It's somewhere between white gold and yellow gold. It's a lot like what F.P. Journe called straw gold on the Journe Society, Chronomet Souverain. It's very much like that. And I don't actually have another yellow gold watch to showcase the difference, but I do have a very large rose gold watch to demonstrate the difference in tones, and you can really see that. Up close, there is no comparison between them, and the honey gold is just lovely pale, vintage evocative, and this watch, 37.5 millimeters, is a lovely vintage-sized men's dress complication. I'll mention another advantage of honey gold. It is much harder to scratch than conventional gold, and that's by design. Throw it on my wrist, it's just lovely. Less than 9.5 millimeters thick, it slides underneath the cuff. It's a 45-hour manual wind power reserve. You've got a special dial here that's made of sterling silver and then cut with a lovely billowing rose lathe pattern at the center. Longa doesn't do a whole lot of guilloche, which makes this doubly impressive. A beautifully balanced dial with sub-seconds and then a moon phase with an extraordinary long duration of correction. A turn the watch over and you can see that the movement has been elaborated in extraordinary fashion. This is L943, manual wind, moon phase, 45-hour power reserve, and you can see that there's a damaskining around the edge, a lovely sort of 19th century engraving motif. And then we have Cote de Soleil, or sunburst stripes, radiating out from the center wheel of the movement. All of the pivot jewels, of course, are in chiton. We have that three-quarter style bridge, and a feature I haven't really called attention to hitherto in the video. You can see that there's beautiful mirrored beveling on the edge of this bridge. Langa Anglage, and I'll get as close as I can here, is as good as anything in the industry. It is truly finished by hand, which means the last phase of this is done by entirely manual means. Unlike a lot of brands, including some Patek Fleet movements where you can still see faint milling marks, if you were to take a loop to this bridge, you would see that the anglage is mirrored, smooth, and flawless. Of course, we do have some more freehand engraving, 
and the fact that the watch is uniquely finished on both sides sets it apart from a lot of longer watches that are merely beautiful or at least ornate on the reverse side. This manages to bring some of the elan of longer movement design and finish over to the dial side. 165 years F.A. Longa and of course a very very special dial and a very very special case back in honey gold. Now, the 1815 collection has had two generations of 1815 flyback chronograph. This is the second generation, but it's important to remember that the first generation was made from 2004 to 2008. It was discontinued, came back in 2010, and not everyone liked the new version of the watch. The dial was a little bit sterile, and some folks were longing for the old uh, scales, the old timing scales of the original model. So this watch, which has a lovely silver white dial and blue printing, is a boutique edition launched late in 2015. It is 39.5 millimeters in white gold and it returns some of the warmth of the original model. You can see there is a pulsation scale outboard graduated for 30 pulsations, which means what you do is you can use the flyback here to start the chronograph and you count while holding the pulse of your patient, you count 30 pulsations. And if, for example, 28, 2930. You stop right there. You can see that we're looking at a pulse of about 175 beats a minute. So that's how that works. Now the watch, of course, is a flyback chronograph. It uses the same base movement as the datograph, but it does not have the power reserve and it does not have the date, which means this watch is less than 11 and a half millimeters thick. It's about two millimeters plus thinner than a datograph. The dial, as ever, is made of sterling silver and it has a nice depth thanks to the addition of the pulsation scale outboard. Lovely black polished white gold alpha style hands. Turn it all over. And we have the second generation datograph chronograph caliber. It's the L9515, which means manual wind with a 60 hour power reserve. It does feature a free spring balance. It does have an overcoil hairspring. It does have that lovely handmade overcoil hairspring that is rare on longer watches. And from the back, it looks identical to the datograph because all of the additional complication on the dado is underneath the dial. So you get everything on the reverse side. You get the complexity of the levers, horns, recentering hammers, column wheel and clutch of the chronograph the jumper springs, the bridges, the architecture, all of the detail and depth, you get all of that with this watch. So if you love the Datograph, but you think it's just a little bit too squat and bulky, this is your watch. Remember today the Dato is a 40.9 millimeter watch, so this at 39.5 is probably even a better fit for most wrists. I can tell you it's my clear preference, unless I'm going for the original 39 millimeter Datograph. You give me a choice between the current Dato and this, I'm taking this 10 out of 10 times. It's a really glorious watch and a wonderful counterpart to Patek Philippe's 5170 and 5172. Uh, in fact, I would even give this a little bit of an edge over almost any version save the Platinum 5170. A very special watch, probably the best all-around 1815 for daily use. Now, I wasn't too clear before. Uh, there are additional families in the Longa catalog. There is the 1815 that we discussed, there's the Zeitwerk, but then there's also the Saxonia. The Saxonia family, you'll find, uh, generally uses stick indices, but what we have right here is a combination of Roman numerals and a Saxonia family watch. Originally launched in 2001, this is the Longomatic Perpetual, which is technically, along with the Datograph, part of the Saxonia family. Now, the watch is 38.5 millimeters in white gold. Again, we have that sterling silver with white gold hands, white gold numerals, uh, the gold moon phase disc. Here the watch is a wonderful blend of easy to read complication. Now you still get the double digit panorama datum or the outsized date and then you get a leap year phase indicator, you get a month the year indicator. Note that these sub registers are actually loomed. You get a 24 hour dial so you know when not to use the pusher correctors to adjust the calendar. You get a radial display of the day. You get a sub seconds that is coax seal with the moon phase and the watch if you watch carefully i'm going to zero reset the seconds it has a hacking second system courtesy of the saxomat micro rotor automatic it zero resets the seconds display so you can more easily set the watch against a reference time now another feature that's underrated let's do a quick loom shot 
the fact that this dial, as with the dotograph, is fully loomed. And you can see that the sub-registers, too, are also loomed. So this is a more practical watch than many Longa offerings, as it's a nice mix of sports and casual with the formality and proportions of a dress watch with the practicality that comes with automatic winding, a useful everyday complication, and a loomed dial. So you're getting a lot with this watch. You're also getting a full deploying class, but again, that's an optional upgrade that someone chose at the point of sale, not something that's standard on this watch. Turn it all over, you'd see that Saxomat is a monster. Uh, caliber L922, 46 hour automatic winding power reserved as the zero reset second system, and a number of embellishments that I absolutely adore. First, take a look at this unusual 21 karat gold rotor, which you can see is a combination of mirrored beveled on its side, satinated on its top, and then chiseled in its recesses, with blued screws fixing that 21 karat gold rotor to a platinum winding mass. So both rotor and mass are not only hand finished, they're both precious metal. Now you can see that there is engine turning on the base plate in two sides, glasuta stripes across the bridges, blued screws, black polished elements, and then you've got another freehand engraved component right here. A very special watch. And again, this is really more of a three-quarter style rotor than a micro rotor, but it has the same advantage of a classic micro rotor. It puts the rotor in the same plane as the bridges, which makes the watch thin. And it also gives the open and visible display back that people love with manual wind movements, but it gives you that with the convenience of an automatic. Now, I should mention every single watch on display today is 30 meters water resistant, so you're not going to swim with any of these. Uh, but this timepiece on my wrist might be the best balance of all the watches offered. The combination of complexity, practicality, versatility, both aesthetic and functionally, means that this is a superb piece for almost anyone. If you're a woman who collects watches and you don't want gems and quartz, this is a great unisex option, a real way to get into a brass ring complication from one of the ultimate brands in horology. Long I'm making about 5,000 watches a year, so though they are a Richemont brand, production is still relatively scarce by the standards of, say, Patek with its 40 to 50,000 watches a year. So this is a watch to think about and a very cool and enduring reference in the catalog from the Saxonia family. Let's bring out perhaps the most monstrous and memorable Saxonia of all time. Okay, maybe not the most complicated Saxonia family watch ever, but I have to say the double split launched back in 2004 was a landmark watch from a company that sort of made its name launching landmark breakthrough watches. The double split allows you to split not just the seconds, but if you look carefully, you can see coaxial and superimposed minute hands. So if I want to time two events, one that lasts 11 minutes and 22 seconds, and a second that lasts 21 minutes and 5 seconds, I can actually stop both the seconds and the minutes and display both on the same watch, hence double split, splitting the seconds as well as the minutes. Now, this dial is loomed. We will do a loom shot, but take a look at the depth of this dial. The case itself is 43.2 millimeters, meaning this is close to as big as you're ever going to find in a Longa watch. While the Zeitwerk you saw before is nominally larger at 44.2, this is a thicker watch. It is physically more massive, though not larger in diameter. It is larger, in fact. A very special watch. It's got a lot going for it in that it is also a flyback chronograph. So when I'm using it without the split function, I can still restart and reset with a single push of the trigger. Now, the timepiece also includes a power reserve indicator up at 12 o'clock, so you're getting a lot of complication. A double split complication, a flyback chronograph, and a power reserve. Turn it all over, and the depth of this movement is second to none in the watch industry, and by that, I mean You've got the same depth of field uh, that we normally describe when relating the virtues of Grubel 4C watches, and I can assure you, Grubel 4C does no better. Grubel 4C will charge more money. A used double split is possibly the best way to own a King Kong Holy Grail complication in high horology today. You can see, as with the 1815 Rattrapont, we have a double column wheel setup, and we also have a system at center that includes that decoupler mechanism. So that's still in play, but you can see the height of the secondary bridges for the chronograph mechanism speak to the level of complexity. Now, what's remarkable is that Langa double assembles every movement, which means once the movement has been built, cleaned, it is put together and run dry, and then any major omissions or functional issues are addressed. It is then taken down to the parts, 
inspect it again, cleaned again, and put back together with full lubrication and regulation. Very few brands bother to do that, and I include many esteemed independents. Very few brands will double assemble a movement. You've got everything you love about longa movements, the gold, the blue, the silver, all of those hues and such depth, so many parts, a timepiece that frankly exhausts superlatives. The double split and rose gold, as you see right here, actually launched in 2010, uh, several model years after the 2004 original. So this is a little bit different than the original double split, which was a big platinum watch. So if you have any reservations about the size or the heft of the watch, definitely go with the gold models because the platinum is simply overpowering. Now I could wear this watch and you can see the further I get away from the camera, the more natural it looks. The close in view, you have on this camera tends to distort the size of watches. So while this is big, it's not absolutely huge. I could and would wear it. I'm not a rose gold guy, but for a lot of folks, this is the way to go with a giant watch. Add a little bit of warmth. And let's do a loom shot. Okay, we're back, and you can see this is a loomed watch. It actually looks a lot like a big pilot's watch in the dark. So there's an element of practicality and friendly everyday features on this timepiece. As incredible as it is, you could absolutely wear this daily to the office. Now, another famous Saxonia family watch. The Datto has always been part of the Saxonia family, and you can see that's a little bit of a confused family because sometimes we have stick indices, sometimes we have Roman numerals. But make no mistake, this Datagraph Perpetual, which was a model launched uh, originally in 2006, this rose gold model arrived in 2010. It's 40.9 millimeters in diameter. It is a flyback chronograph, like the standard Datagraph, but you also have a perpetual calendar and a moon phase. Now, this dial is beautifully layered, and I really do like the fact that uh, from the hands down to the tachymeter scale to the recesses, the moon phase, and the subregisters. There are several different planes, focal planes, that can grab the eye. Now, what I really like is that Longa is smart about how it engineers things. So let's just make sure we're not the date change danger zone there. Uh, let's say you fall a couple of days behind. Let's say you are operating the watch and, you know, it has a 36-hour power reserve, so maybe you let it go for a day, and it's fallen a few days behind. You pull the crown out, and then the pusher adjuster up at 10 o'clock adjusts everything in sync. Note that even the moon phase is stepping forward. So if you know that you've fallen four days behind, one, two, three, four, and everything is back in sync, it's that simple. The watch, of course, like every Longa chronograph, has best in the world column wheel pusher feel. It's a combination of silk and mechanical detention that is difficult to describe, but I can almost uh, say that when you start pushing the trigger, it's almost like it sucks itself in the last half a millimeter. It's a really special feeling. Once again, we get a loomed dial, and once again, we get a very special chronograph. Now, I told you that the datograph and the 1815 chronograph are almost identical from the reverse side, and you can see that really is true. There's not a whole lot to tell between them. You're getting the same level of quality, which is absolute and unambiguous. This is the kind of watch that you can really appreciate without a loop because the detailing is so lavish that it shows through to the naked eye. A very special and handsome watch. You can see it features a full deploying clasp. That's another great accessory to have. Let's do a loom shot on this Dotto. Okay, like I said, fully loomed. It looks a lot like the double split in the dark because they hail from the same design lineage and family. A very special timepiece. We'll put it on my wrist, get a look at it, zoom out a bit, get a sense of its proportions. This is a nice all-arounder. At under 41 millimeters, it fits well on a smaller wrist. It's not a small watch, but it's also not huge. If you had any doubts about the double split, I'd definitely consider this size. A uh, watch that's just wonderful to wear, very comfortable, well-balanced, and as you can see because of the domed bezel, it's probably going to play nice with your dress cuffs. So no real concerns right there. And with the perpetual calendar provided, you just wind it every day. You've got nothing to worry about. No calendar resets till the year 2100. And you ask, well, why should I have to wind the watch every day? And I say, with a watch like this, why wouldn't you want to wind it every day? Food for thought. I have just the one Richard Longa on the show today. And I'm teasing it because I'm going to save it for last.
Let's talk about the Longa One. This is a model that was launched in 2014, rose gold, 41.9 millimeters. It is the Longa One Tourbillon Perpetual Calendar. So let's say you like the Dado Perpetual, but you don't necessarily need a chronograph. We don't often use chronographs. That said, a tourbillon is working for you 24 hours a day because it is always exercising its pirouette circuit, uh, hopefully to even out the effects of gravity on the escape. And it's hit or miss on a wristwatch, but Longa tourbillons are functional in that they really do achieve outstanding chronometric performance. You can see once again, as with the prior 1815 tourbillon, we have a capstone below the balance that is made of diamond. While the rubies are synthetic, the diamond is real. We also have more freehand engraving and it is gloriously gorgeous. Once again, we have a stop seconds or hacking tourbillon. Once again, we have a rotor that is half yellow gold and half platinum. A big L82, that's the name of the movement, L zero eight two an automatic winder with a 50 hour power reserve note the black polished cap at the center of the rotor my particular favorite detail but because the three-quarter bridge here is composed of several different panels that are used for easier access during service you wind up with a lot more anglage because there are more edges as a result of more bridges so while standard longa watches typically only feature anglage on the balance cock and the edge of the three-quarter bridge here you wind up with quite a bit of beveling that's probably aesthetically the most interesting feature of the movement aside from the main event the Torbion. Now, what I really like, too, is that you get a wonderful perpetual calendar on the dial that preserves the essential aesthetic and architecture of the Longa One dial. Uh, the Longa One was one of the original four watches presented in 1994 at Dresden Castle. It remains in the catalog, and there are several different versions. Now, here we have a perpetual calendar where you have a leap phase indicator, you have the month, you have the moon phase, you have the day, which you'll recognize from the daymatic, the Longa One daymatic, and then the double-digit date and push your adjusters for adjusting all of that. At 41.9 millimeters, it's not as big as you might think. Sub 42 millimeter watches are not considered oversized by modern standards, and this one certainly isn't. It's also fairly thin, so it is gonna fit underneath the cuff, and I absolutely adore just eat up this Jean Rousseau Parisian-made custom strap that we fit, which is a lovely sort of aubergine, and it's very dark in that respect, but it has a contrasting gold stitch and no compromise in quality. It's actually better than a longer factory strap as it uses alligator on both sides for long-wearing durability. Yes, there is a deploying clasp. We're lucky that many of the watches featured today do include that accessory. This is a spectacular watch. Uh, even pre-owned, it's close to $200,000. So if you're wondering, what is the ultimate watch on today's show? From a pure pricing perspective, it's this thing right here. A longa one that is also a tourbillon, a moon phase, a stop second, and a perpetual calendar. This watch can do it all. That said, for travelers, sometimes nothing replaces the convenience of a second time zone. And for 2019, Alango Unzona agreed. Now, they originally launched the Longa One time zone at SIHH 2005, which is why the model still uses the older Grand Alango One case that came out in 2003 and was discontinued after 2011. 41.9 millimeters in white gold, this 25 piece limited edition is one millimeter larger than the current Grand Alango One case, which means it's got a nice wrist stance and presence. It's not thick at 11.2 millimeters. It'll slide underneath the cuff. 25 pieces here made in 2019 for the 25th anniversary of the Saxon manufacturer. Now, 10 editions of 25 pieces were made. This might be the most practical for everyday use. The time zone function here is pretty clever, to be perfectly honest. It's a little bit like the Gégère Le Coult Master Geographic. How this works is you set your city of reference, that is your city where you are not, at this little white gold index on the sub register, the sub dial down at five o'clock. So here I can make some changes to the date using the pusher up at 10 o'clock. So you've got that function, you don't lose it. And then lower, I can change my city of reference. And you can see how the watch does all the math for me and it keeps track of whether it's day or night in that city where I am not. So I know, for example, that right now I am looking at ba -ba -ba -ba, midnight because that little blue arc represents night. Now you can also tell right here, I am looking at six in the evening on my local time dial. Let's move that minute hand out of the way because I have AM PM indicators for both local and reference time. That's rare on a travel time watch. Uh, you can set the travel time function uh, 
separately from the city reference ring. So if you just want to adjust the hour here, you can do so without changing the city. There is a way to decouple them. You pull the crown out and then you use the pusher adjuster. Uh, what else? I can also say it's a three-day power reserve. In spite of the complexity, you do not lose the three-day power reserve of the standard longer one. And it's worth mentioning that because this is a German-made watch, the time zone that normally encompasses Paris, uh, so GMT plus one, you can see Berlin replaces Paris on the dial. And on the reverse side, a one Wonderful and custom Longa One caliber. Uh, this is the L031, and you can see that it uses a set of freehand engraved half bridges that have been blue inked, and there's a little mark to remind you this is the 25th anniversary. Normally, these are just engraved. To have them engraved and then inked is very special. And you can see these pocket watch nostalgic spiral spoke wheels are used to control that second time zone. A wonderful timepiece, simple white gold pin buckle to match. Uh, this is a watch for travelers and those who perhaps have far flung friends, family, and business communications to attend to. All right, let's say you want the ultimate in Longa Loom. Surprisingly, it's not going to be the Odysseus sports watch. It's going to be f something from the Lumen series. Now, we've had a couple of different versions. We've had the Zeitwerk Lumen. We've had the Grand Longa One Lumen of 2013, which is what you have here in 200 pieces. Uh, 2016 brought us the Grand Longa One Moon Phase Lumen. And, of course, the 20th anniversary Datagraph Lumen was the most recent entry in the series. This watch takes a dial that is fully loomed, and then it adds a a smoked sapphire over the base plate of the movement. So that allows the date discs to charge up and they're charged when they jump into position. So let's move that hour hand out of the night hours. Let's charge it up. Let's blaze. Now we're back with the Grand Longa One Lumen. This watch, of course, as I mentioned, will allow you to charge up the date discs before they enter the frame. That's why the dial is smoked. Well, that and it looks really cool. Three-day power reserve, twin mainspring barrels, mechanically it's identical to other Grand Longa One watches. I will also say this, though. This is the second generation Grand Longa One case of which I spoke earlier. It features a 40.9 millimeter diameter, so it's not quite as large as the time zone you just saw. Throw it on the wrist and you can see it's just marginally smaller, not in a really big way, about 11 millimeters thick. It's a thin watch. It can be your dress watch. It should be your dress watch, but it should also be your casual watch. Wear it with short sleeves. Wear it with short pants. This is a timepiece that can do just about anything but go swimming. Now, let's take a look at the reverse side. As you can see, absolutely gorgeous. This is what I mean when I say that there's not a whole lot of anglage on longa movements because you don't have a whole lot of freestanding bridges. You've got this big three-quarter bridge, but one feature I like on these longa one movements is that you do have these access panels cut into the three-quarter bridge for easier service, and they are beveled on their side, so I really like that attention to detail. Super gorgeous, flat, flush, handsome, and classically longa. This is probably the second best-known longa movement look after the datograph. We near the end with oh, what is probably my favorite watch on the show. Uh, this came out in 2018 and blew everyone's mind. The best looking ultra thin time only blue dial dress watch does not hail from Francois Paul Journe. It hails from Saxony. This is the Alonga Unzona Saxonia Thin copper blue. It features a, a flux dial, as they call it. It's a venturine glass, which is essentially a type of blue translucent enamel on a sterling silver dial base to which copper flakes, metal elements, are then added. Hence, copper blue. Blue with copper elements added. You wind up with something that looks almost like a window into the world of the Guardians of the Galaxy as it's bottomless, haunting, like the infinite depth of the cosmos with white gold indices, only two hands, and it only needs two hands, alpha style, polished white gold. 6.4 millimeters thick, 39 millimeters in diameter. It lives up to its name. This Saxonia is very thin. And at just over $23,000, I can tell you this is the most affordable watch on today's show by a huge margin of about 13 
thousand dollars to the next watch up and it's the watch that i would most like to own look at that it's sliding underneath my cuff it's barely taller than my wrist hair this is a watch that'll fit any wrist male female <sighs> adult child please don't give this to a kid maybe as a graduation present but wait until they're at least into double digits the movement is gorgeous though for once i really feel like the dial is the dominant feature of this longa watch you can also see original packing stickers still on this watch so i can guarantee you whoever bought this originally had no fun with it. It's still covered with stickers, meaning the only scratches on this case are in the stickers themselves. The movement here uh, is a lovely three-day manual wind power reserve. Three days is actually very impressive for a movement this thin. It's properly sized for the case, and it's a joy to inspect. The details are as good as anything you'll find on any other longa. It's just that, well, there's this dial, and I can't get over it. If you're going to buy just one watch from today's show, obviously it's in my interest for you to buy the Tourbillon Perpetual Calendar Longa 1, but my heart tells you go for this, because this is as good as it gets, and this might be longa's single most desirable watch. If ever longa timepieces start trading above their list price, if ever they go Patek Philippe Nautilus, this is going to be the first one to climb. Okay, now I make good on my teaser. Here's a watch launched in 2011 that is just so full of surprise and delight features. I, I can't imagine how they packed it all into under 42 millimeters. And let me show you something. This watch is super slim. You can see it's 41.7 millimeters, but then look, it's not thick at all. It's 12.5 millimeters. That's like a Rolex sports watch right there, which means if you can wear a Rolex sports watch under a cuff, you can wear this. Rose gold, sterling silver dial, a triple overlap Johann Seyfried scale, and then you can see, yeah, there's a tourbillon. That's cool. And yes, there's a stop second function for the tourbillon, but check it out. There's also a hide away subdial that displays the hours when necessary and cloaks them when not. How cool is that? Who else does that? No one. That's who. Flip it all over, the movement gets even better. There's a fusée and chain constant force device. If you're asking, Tim, wasn't there a remontoire constant force device earlier in the show? Yes, there was. Longa has two types of constant force device. This one is their original from the 1994 Tourbillon Pour Le Merit, you can see it's a fusée and chain, and the chain winds from the barrel to the fusée, and the chain is 20 centimeters long, one quarter of a millimeter wide, and despite being so thin, petite, delicate in appearance, it can suspend two kilograms of mass vertically. All of that, and it includes over 630, 636 parts in the chain alone. There's a planetary system built in, so when you're winding the watch, no less energy, or no less force, I should say, reaches the escapement. So this watch operates for 36 hours with a single wind, and for 36 hours, you get constant force to the escapement, which means constant amplitude to the balance. You've got the hideaway dial, the stop seconds, the tourbillon. You've got the fusée and chain, and a beautifully set of skeletonized bridges that let you observe and appreciate the mechanism. And once again, we've got a diamond capstone underneath the tourbillon. Technically speaking, and I mean that from an engineering standpoint, this is the most technically interesting watch I'm offering on the show today. Technically speaking, there is very little that can counter it. Grubel 4C might be able to make something similar, but it would be in a watch four or five millimeters larger and probably twice the thickness. Nothing comes close to this. Once again, we've got that desirable accessory, a full deploying clasp, and this is just a window into the inventory that Watchbox has for Alango Unzona. So whether you buy these watches or you go on our Longa section on our website right now, please let it be known when you reach out that Tim sent you because I am a fanboy of the brand and I want it to thrive. I think this is what fans should be buying in 2021. Forget Jorn, Patek, even Moser, which I love. The most underrated brand that gives you the most watchmaking cred, the most engineering finish substance for the money it's a longa unzona it's hiding in plain sight reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details